in the process hallelujah as they were going he had already lost his son prematurely the bible says aaron died before his father how can you your children die before you if it is not premature death i've seen of I, I don't know if it is happening here but sometimes you can find those you know those grandmas very old at home in your village they will see young people dying some of their grandchildren die and they will say god why you could have taken me instead of taking this my grandchild it is so unfair and you know this is what happened this is what happened Terra experienced premature death in his own household again sarai getting married to abram then she becomes what barren now here they are the situation is not good in the land of ur the land of the chaldeans they are saying terra says i want to to change base i want to shift from the land of chaldeans i want to go to where to canaan but when he reaches haran the bible says he settles there he does not proceed and what happens he dies there so abram is there left with sarai then god comes where we have read are you there genesis 12 i want to take this very slow i want to take this very slow are you there genesis 12 verse verse 4 what does it say Are you there? Genesis chapter 12 verse. So Abram departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him and Lot his nephew left with him. Abram was 75 years old when he... 205 years and Terah died where? Terah died where? Oh, let's, let's preach this together. Terah died where? And Genesis 12 4 says... Says... That Abraham was 75 years old when he left. Terah died in Haran. But when it reached 75 years, Abraham left. Where your fathers left you, you're gonna break the limit. Oh, you have not heard what I've said. I say, where your fathers left you, you're gonna break the limit. Let me come where you are. You're going to break the limit. Okay, let's take it again. Where? In a harem. Think of those many years. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us how long they were there. <laughs> but um, what I know, you have to break the limit. Yeah. I say you're going to break the limit. Yeah. Take whatever by covenant. Yeah. I'm going to break the limit. I will go beyond my fathers. Some of you, your father owned, died owning a very old car. But you're going to drive the best in town. Some of you, you're, you're at, your, at your village, the only houses that they built was those muddy houses. And you know, those houses that are, uh, they are, they are just there, but they can fall any time. When you're sleeping in those houses, you're sleeping but praying God's grace to hold you. And you are there and coming from that generation. But I'm here to tell you God is about to surprise you and bless you. You're going to be the one to lift that family. Because you're going to break the limitations. Somebody say yes. So what really happened for Abraham to make a change? God decided to come into covenant with him. So don't play when God makes a covenant with a man. That means that God has interest. And when God has interest with you, what's your name? Uh, Shalanati. Shalanati. Uh, that name, I'm telling you. Give me another name. <laughs> Tala. Ah, Tala, that's better. <laughs> ah, I cannot go with that. <laughs> Pastor Tala, when God makes a covenant with you, it means he has interest. That means that if God has interest with you, he has to do everything possible. 
to make sure Sangomas cannot play around with you. To make sure that no accident when you are in the road, no devil of death can come. When, when it comes to your kidneys, your liver, your, your heart condition, every part of your body, he has to make sure there is an angel who is in charge of your health. To make sure that no sick. Oh, nobody's not saying amen. Oh, you're going to be well. Even your eyes, God will assign an angel to take care of your eyes. Amen. Even your feet. The, there's a scripture that says he will not allow even your feet to, to stumble. Because covenant simply means when God makes a covenant with you, he says he has interest with you. And if he has interest with you, because there is there's, there's a bigger picture that God has, he does not only see you, but he sees your generation, he sees your descendants, he sees the community, and he sees South Africa, and he sees someone he can use for his own glory. So when God makes a covenant with you, he's not only thinking of you, but he's thinking of the generation. I'm speaking to somebody here. You're going to believe what I'm telling you. God is about to turn your situation around. People saw you down. But they will be surprised to see you happen. They left you in a haram, but you're not gonna stay in a haram. Where your fathers reached, you're gonna break the limit. Tell your neighbor, breaking the transgenerational family limitation. They left you in a haram. You are there, first year, second year, until 75 years. 75 years. And God says, God comes into the into Haram and says, this is not your place. Abraham, this is not your place. I am about to do something that is bigger than you. It is going to involve nations. It's going to involve nations. So I better make a covenant with you. But I cannot make a covenant with you while you're in a Haram. So you must out of your kingdom, come out of your country, come out of your father's house, and go to the place that I will show you. And God begins to speak to Abraham. He begins to give him what I call covenant promise. And you see, the covenant promise is good because it encourages you in the process as you are in the journey of the covenant. When God tells you, I will make you a great nation. I will make you your name great. You know, there are 30 spoken promises, words that God spoke to Abraham. But I like the seven. I like the seven. Hello? The first one he said to him, separate. Separate. I'm about to do something in your life. But separate. I see there is an angel with a scissor. And there's going to be a disconnection. Anything that you've inherited from your generation that is not of God, we're going to disconnect you. Can somebody say, I'm coming up? Oh, I told you, you're not going to suffer rejection. We're going to disconnect you. You're not going to suffer miscarriage. We're going to disconnect you. You're not going to suffer marriage breakdown. We're going to disconnect you. You're not going to suffer divorce. We're going to disconnect you. I disconnect your life. I disconnect your life. Every wrong passage and every wrong inheritance from your generation, we disconnect you. Oh, I must speak to somebody here. God said to him, separate, separate, separate. He says to him, you know what? After you separate, then God begins to speak. He says, number one, I'll make you a great nation. Number, 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 sorry. The first thing was separate. Then God says, the second thing is, I will make you a great nation. Number three, he says to him, I will bless you. How can you tell somebody who is blessed? I will bless you. Because if you read according to the to the to the to the, to the scholars, Abraham, when he was called by God, he was not poor. His father had a lot of wealth. The only problem is the wealth was not in the covenant, and that's why Melchizedek came to appear somewhere in the life of Abraham, and that is where Abraham decided. Now I'm gonna give the ten. Of everything, he had to count the cows, count the goats, 
How many goats are thousand? I give a hundred. How many cows? I see two thousand. I give two hundred to God to Melchizedek. He gave everything. If you read Genesis thirteen, are you there? Genesis thirteen. We are traveling together this journey. Genesis thirteen. The Bible says he was rich in what? Are you there? Verse two. He was rich in gold, silver, and so God was not calling a poor person. But the truth is, the wealth was, the, the blessings of the Lord added no soul. So these blessings were there, but because they were in the land of idolatry, there was a lot of soul. There was immature death. There was barrenness. There was stagnation. I don't care what you have and what your father had, but as long as everything they had, it is not in covenant. It cannot bring joy. It will always bring sorrow. And I'm here to tell you, God said to Abraham, separate. And when he separated, God said, I cannot move with you. And Till all these things that you have, it must be in covenant. So you must give a tithe of everything that you have. Because I've just begun the journey with you. Some of you even struggle, struggle to give a tithe. You struggle to give a tithe. Huh? The, 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 the cloth that you are wearing, there is tithe in it. That good hair that you have, there is tithe in it. So you are walking. But everything that you have is, is not in covenant. You drive a car, but there, there is some, the devil says there's something that belongs to me in this car. There's a red alarm. There's a red alarm. And if there's a screening that can be done by angels now, I'm telling you, if screening can be done to everything that you have, there will be a lot of sound. Everywhere it belongs to me. 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 Ask your neighbor, have you covenanted everything that you have? When you are when you're in that saloon making that a hair of three thousand rand or two thousand rand, have you given God his portion? 